U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland responding today to criticism over the recently announced Hunter Biden plea deal. Republicans are accusing him of blocking U.S. Attorney David Weiss from charging Biden with more serious crimes. Mr. Weiss was appointed by President Trump as the U.S. Attorney in Delaware and assigned this matter during the previous administration would be permitted to continue his investigation and to make a decision to prosecute any way in which he wanted to and in any district in which he wanted to. I don't know how it would be possible for anybody to block him from bringing a prosecution given that he has this authority. Hunter Biden agreed to plead guilty to two misdemeanor counts of failing to pay taxes. He'll also commit to court-imposed conditions that will spare him prosecution on a felony gun charge. And joining us now with some insight on this past week is the host of the WGN Political Report, Paul Lisnick. Paul, how you doing? Hi, guys. Happy Friday. You Happy too. Happy Friday. Let us start with local politics. Yep. Brandon Johnson has been taking uh, some criticism for the way he's responded to violence in the city. He says he's playing the long game while he addresses the s systemic causes of violence. That's a challenging political spot for him to be in. Well, it is. And, you know, his plan has always been the long game. He wants to have increased mental health and all those kind of things. And that's all a noble plan. But that doesn't resolve things in the current weekend mm -hmm. and the next weekend. And so as he saw just some horrendous numbers over Memorial Day weekend and we got 4th of July around the corner. So I think what, what the mayor is going to have to do, not that he's not doing it, but um, yes, think ahead, think about all those things you want to do in the future, but at the same time, you got to do something now. For example, he wanted to fill 200 detective spots, and in a recent talk he gave, I'm fairly, fairly sure he said that's not necessarily happening right now. So, um, and I know it takes time to fill them, but anyway, he needs to think of the short-term game as well. Right. Let's talk about Donald Trump. August 14th is supposed to be his trial date for the documents case, but Judge Aileen Con uh, Connor, no, Aileen, Aileen, Aileen. <laughs> Aileen Oh, Cannon. 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 Yes, Cannon. Cannon. You just threw me when yeah, you said yeah. that. Cannon. She's um, not likely to do it on time, right? Not August Well, 14th. actually, I can give you a little breaking news on that because tonight the government prosecutor, Jack Smith, they filed a motion to hold the trial date, push it back yeah. to December 11th. Hmm. And, and you say, why would the prosecution do that? Well, look, everybody knew this wasn't going to happen right. in August. And the prosecution essentially in their motion said, here's what we need to do. We need to do discovery. We need to do all these kind of things. So December, December 11th is what they essentially put, out, put forth as a realistic date. Doesn't mean she'll grant it, um, but she could. And the prosecution also in these last couple of days, man, they've been turning over tons of discovery. That doesn't typically happen. Usually that happens close to the trial time. Usually it happens when the defendant asks for it. Smith isn't playing that game. Smith is basically from day one going, here's everything, take a look, and let's get a realistic date of December 11th. And uh, while we're talking about the, the electors, um, he also uh, let them have immunity for testimony against uh, the former president. What does that signal to you? So that's about the January 6th stuff, not right. about this mar a sure. thing, of course. And what he's granted is um, limited immunity, or it's called mm -hmm. use immunity. And what that means is that these folks who will now have to testify, because essentially he's saying, we're not going to hold what you say against you on these topics, on the fake elector topics. These people, a couple of them, were indeed some of the fake electors. And I think what that suggests to me is that it, Smith doesn't really care about the fake electors. He wants to know who sent the fake electors, who's mm -hmm. above it all. So one good way to do that is to take the people that actually did it and say, okay, I'm going to give you a break, limited use immunity, not come after you with what you tell me, but you must testify now, and they mm -hmm. must. And this week, Hunter Biden, uh, the president's son, <sighs> got a plea deal. Yeah. Is it too harsh, too lenient? And the Republicans are not happy about it. So, you know, Michael, you're right. Republicans are saying he got a, he got a slap on the hand. It's really nothing. Um, and the, and here's the bottom line, the way I look at this is this was a Trump appointed prosecutor. All right. And that makes a difference. This wasn't a, you can't say, oh, the Biden administration, yeah. a Trump appointed prosecutor who actually was given full reign. Merrick Garland has even said, I told him he can do whatever he wants to do and charge whatever he wants. So these were the ultimate decisions made by the Trump prosecutor who's been looking at this for years. So I, what, what is possible is that, you know, there are those, well, he could have been charged with other things. There's apparently a whistleblower, whistleblower at the IRS who said you could have gone more. I suppose so. that's what plea deals are. If we get you to say you're guilty to this, we give up some other stuff. That's the world of pleas.
Is, are we going to see the end of this with, with Hunter Biden, or you think this will trail the president all the way to the election? So I would have said this should be the end of it, because why would you agree to anything if, and by the way, we're still looking at your laptop, mm -hmm. right? So you, that should be the end of it. However, in a report issued by the prosecutor, there was a sentence in there that said the investigation is ongoing. Now, whether that meant ongoing because he hasn't yet entered that plea in court, or whether they're continuing to look at things, we don't know. Mm -hmm. But I'd be surprised that, uh, if Hunter would have agreed to it with the possibility that more is to come. All right, so the Supreme Court enters its final week. Yeah. A number of pending cases there. What are you going to be watching? So next, there's three big ones that we're going to keep our eyes open for. Affirmative action, um, which let's go ahead and predict the Supreme Court's going to get rid of affirmative action, the effort to... Mm. Well, and by got the, rid of Roe v. Wade. Well, and get rid and of this is your, you're reaching yeah. those kind of levels. And, and um, you know, here's the thing about affirmative action, which is... The way, the where it is now, because people think of affirmative action as maybe these grandiose programs, where it is right now is that all the court has said, as for years, is that you can consider race as one factor among many in admissions decisions. That's where things are now. And, and so race is a factor that may be considered. So I do expect them to step in and, and take out race completely. They could take a side road, which is to say, okay, we don't like the Harvard uh, exception. We don't like the UNC program, but I think they're going to they're going to go farther than that. In addition, there is a freedom of speech LBGTQ rights case. This was the website designer who, and it was fascinating here is she said, I don't want to make websites for same sex couples, except no same-sex couple had gone to her. She didn't deny anybody, and nobody was suing her. What that means is she essentially went to the Supreme Court, court system, but the Supreme Court, saying, I don't want to have to do this. You need standing to enter the court. You need injury to enter the court. This court essentially said, we'll take that case, even though there's no standing, which suggests to me they're going with the web designer. Quickly, what happened, and why did they censure Congressman Adam Schiff? Oh, they censured him as punishment over his role in the Trump uh, in, the, in the Trump impeachment. There's no question about that. Adam Schiff uh, will turn this around. He's running for Senate in California, so we, we can be sure that he's going to uh, use that. To, he already is using it to raise money. But what's interesting on top of that, while that's going on, yeah. at the same time, there are efforts among the Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert Bobert. to actually have um, the House reverse the impeachments on former President Trump. They want to take votes and wipe those out. Not sure that's doable, but that's what well, they want to do. Have time to do all of this. Aren't there other things mm -hmm. they should be working on? Well, they also want to, and this is answering your question, they also want to impeach President Biden and they want to impeach him over the border handling. Well, when you say what else are they doing, they might want to spend time passing a border bill. They could do that. They've got the votes to pass it. So rather than impeaching somebody, and, that, and that's not, you might disagree with Biden's policy, but it's not a high crime and dis misdemeanor. That's what it takes in order to impeach uh, somebody. So it's another spinning your wheels kind of a thing, and it's silly. They ought to just pass some border bills. All right, last question. President Biden coming to Chicago next week. That's yeah. good for Governor Pritzker. Yeah, he's, he's going to be out front and center. He, he's been with him for quite a while in terms of doing this, but uh, there'll be a fundraiser and other topics. And I think this is just Pritzker putting himself, I don't think he's going anywhere. I don't think there's a cabinet position mm -hmm. or anything like that. Pritzker will remain governor. But I do think he has his sights set on 2028. We'll see. Um, but I think he's, he's got those higher hopes. And by having the DNC hosted here in Chicago, and certainly Illinois, that gives Pritzker a lot to focus on. He'll talk about Bidenomics. And he will talk about Bidenomics, yeah. right? <laughs> on your show this weekend. Uh, so this weekend, I have got State Senator Karina Villa. She's coming in to talk about, you know, the budget for it's only $550 million for the migrants. Uh, Pritzker cut that. We're going to talk about that and why that got cut and whether anything can happen. In addition, Shimmy Braun and Brian Johnson, he's the uh, CEO of Equality Illinois, they're going to come in and talk about a really cool program for the LGBTQ community um, called Just Say LGBTQ. Uh, and it's about helping with housing uh, and efforts like that in a, in a time when there's just a lot of discrimination going mm -hmm. on against that community, so they'll be talking about that. Did you have fun on Paul Lisnick Day Monday? <laughs> it was a great time, and they've named the obsolete equipment for me in the hallway. Oh, so <laughs> there it goes. Oh, in our hallway here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what so I mean. I that. It was a lot of fun. Right, Thank you good. so much. Thank you.